There is an etiquette for that. The second part of the Shahada. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ What is the definition of Rasul? And what is the difference between Rasul and Nabi? Nabi is a prophet. Rasul is a messenger. What is the difference? There are a lot of definitions and statements. The most authentic is that a messenger is someone sent to people with a specific revelation and law for them. While a prophet is someone who is sent to his people but without a new revelation or a law. He follows the revelation and the law of those before him. But he does not have a specific law of his own. Such as Prophet Sulaiman. Before him was his father Dawood. And they are from the Bani Israel. See, they all followed what? The books of Musa, peace be upon him. And so on. So, to testify that the Prophet ﷺ is a messenger of Allah, or the messenger of Allah. Why not the Prophet of Allah? Because every messenger is a prophet, by default. Every messenger is, but not the other way around. Not every prophet is a messenger. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, he first became a prophet or a messenger? What was first? He was a prophet. When Allah told him, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. This is a prophecy. He was given revelation, but he was not ordered to convey. He was not ordered to order the people to come. Once he was ordered to do that, and the scholars say, the order or the message came to him through which surah? Yes, Ahsantum. Very good. Al Muddathir. Ya ayyuh al Muddathir. Qum. Khalas. This is an instruction. Qum fa'anthir. Go and warn your people. So, what does believing in the Prophet to be a messenger of Allah include? It includes that you obey him in whatever he orders you. And that you refrain from whatever he denies you and prohibits upon you. And that you believe him in everything that he tells you about. And that you do not worship Allah except through his commands. Four things. If there was a quiz, I would include this definitely. What does the belief in the message of the Prophet ﷺ include four things. Obey him in what he ordered. Refrain from what he had prohibited. Believe him in whatever he had told us about. Because he, be he tells us about Jannah, Nar. There is no order and there is no prohibition. So this is belief. And number four, to worship Allah only through his command. You do not worship Allah with something innovated, something from your own whims and desires, only through the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, to believe in the message of the Prophet ﷺ is to believe that any religion other than his nowadays is not accepted. So someone says, I believe in Muhammad to be a great messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I believe in the Quran to be a revelation, but I am still a Christian. But I don't believe in Jesus to be the son of God. He's a messenger and a great messenger and I love him. And I remain on my religion, yet I believe in your religion as well. This is a kafir. He will not be accepted or admitted to Jannah. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, by the one 
whose my soul is in his hands, no Jew and no Christian would hear about me and does not believe in me, except Allah would admit him to hellfire. There is no compromise, first of all. But we will come to the issue of them being admitted to hellfire that does not give us the justification to say that this Christian or this Jew is in hell. This is a general description. When we come to specific individuals, like is John uh, Doe a Christian? Is he in hell? I don't know. Whoever dies as a Christian will go to hell. Okay, what about John? I cannot say. This is in Allah's knowledge. Maybe he accepted Islam before he died. Maybe Allah gave him an excuse or he had a legitimate reason. But the general description, all Muslims will be in paradise. Is Asim in paradise? You can't tell. If I die, you cannot say he's in paradise. Because this is of ilm al ghayb Specifics. We cannot say in Jannah or in Nar. Unless we have proof. Abu Bakr, without even thinking. Umar, Uthman, Ali, without even thinking. Those whom we are told in Jannah, specifically, we say in Jannah. Abu Jahl, in hell. Fir'aun, in hell. We have no doubts in that. But this is something else insha'Allah. Okay. Uh, to offer the... No, no, I didn't. <laughs> this, I'm just warming up. <laughs> this is shahada. We still have a long way to go. Now, our religion, Islam, is based on two very important principles taken from the shahada la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah what are these two principles one sincerity two following the prophet what does that mean it means that allah does not accept any of your deeds unless these two conditions are fulfilled Al-Ikhlas, sincerity, la ilaha illallah, and al-ittiba' or al-mutaba'ah in Arabic we call it. The following ship of the Prophet <coughs> Without following his footsteps, Allah would not accept your deeds. I have sincerity, I have ikhlas, and I come to pray Maghrib for rak'ah. Come on. Fajr is two, Dhuhr is four, Asr is four, Isha is four, all even numbers. Why Maghrib? So, add one. What will that be? Invalid. Because I'm not following the footsteps of the Prophet I innovate in the religion. Allah will not accept this because I'm not following the Prophet These two conditions are mentioned in so many places in the Quran. And it is clearly mentioned in the Sunnah. And if you want to know if Allah will accept you as a Muslim or not, always look into your deeds. Are they in accordance to the Sunnah? Do I have sincerity? Why do I pray in a very nice way? Because my boss is watching. I want an increment. I want a bonus. I want him to appoint me as a supervisor of my division. That's, I know that. That's why I'm doing, Allahu Akbar. I don't have hunchback. But I, I just do this so that he's impressed. The deed is unaccepted. I have sincerity. But I'm not following the footsteps of the Prophet I am innovating. When I pray, I say, Allah, sincerity, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> what is this? Everybody's normal. No, I am premium. I'm a high level of deen and this means that I'm trying to reach Allah quickly. <laughs> this is innovation, Akhi. what are you doing? He said, you don't know what's in my heart. I said, yes, but I know what I see. 
من أحدث في أمرنا ما ليس منه فهو رد whoever innovates in our religion what's not part of it it is rejected so this is rejected by Allah Azza wa Jal and it won't do you any good and it is important and essential for the shahada to be verbal it is not sufficient for a person to say khalas I'm a Muslim I said it in my heart maybe maybe this would help him with Allah but to us as Muslims he is considered to be what a disbeliever when he dies he dies a disbeliever there are some Muslims who accept Islam but do not go to the Islamic center do not go to the masjid to announce it nobody knows that they're Muslim so we cannot consider them to be Muslim until they announce it but at the side of Allah this is something between them and Allah and Allah knows best so this is number one number two Okay, now all what he had said in Arabic is called وَإِقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ That's it. إِقَام الصلاة To establish and not to pray. So part of the pillars of Islam is that you establish prayer. Which means that it is not sufficient to pray. Rather, you have to follow doing it on time. You have to do its conditions. And you have to pray it in the same format that the Prophet ﷺ had prayed it in. Salat, linguistically, what does it mean? Ahsantum, dua, which is supplication, dua. Technically, what does it mean? What does salat technically mean? Salat, technically, it is specific rhetorics and actions that are inaugurated, they begin with a takbir. And they're concluded with as-salam and performed in a special way at special times. This is salah. This is technical definition of it. When was it mandated? The five daily prayers. When was it mandated? In the Isra wal Mi'raj. After Hijrah. Yes, the brothers are saying yes. Before Hijrah. Before Hijrah. The miraculous night journey. Some say it was a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal in compensation and in condolence for the death of his beloved wife Khadija. And also his beloved uncle who died as a non-Muslim, Abu Talib. So this is what some scholars say. It is mandatory upon every adult who has no obstacles preventing him from praying. What are the obstacles that can prevent you from praying? Huh? Death? Well, no. No, I'll pass. Huh? Junoon, insanity. Okay, so he's an adult, but he's insane. So this prevents him, uh, or prevents salat to be obligatory upon him. Children, they're not adults. Obstacles that come, such as menses for women, they are prohibited, they're prevented from praying because of this. Inna salata Continue Kanat Ala al-mu'minina Kitaban Mawquta Prayer 
is prescribed upon the believers on specific timings. And it's very essential for us to know this. Why? Because a lot of the brothers and sisters, especially here, when they are cornered and don't have time to pray, they say, I'll pray at Kaza. And some have the concept of Kaza Rumuri. You know what that concept is in the subcontinent in India and Pakistan. They pray with every dhuhr, another dhuhr. What is this? It says, this is for lifetime. Maybe in the past, I was a cat. I did not pray, so now I make kaza umuri. They continue to pray with every salat, the same salat. This is innovation. This is not in Islam. As for the timings, it is not permissible for you to wait until the time is over unless there is a legitimate reason such as sleeping or forgetting forgetfulness the prophet said والسلام, whoever oversleeps or forgets a prayer must pray it as soon as he remembers it there is no kafara to it other than that now, kafara is, you, is usually done when you do what? Uh, Juan, don't waste my time, please. Be quick. When I ask you a question, respond. So that we can utilize the time. Kafara is not done or is not given except when what is done? A sin. Huh? You don't have to be a, a rocket scientist. But sleeping... Is it sinful? Forgetting, is it sinful? لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا If we forget or err, make an error. So why do I need an expiation? Scholars say that this is an emphasis from the Prophet ﷺ that if you sleep or forget the kafara for these not two sins is to pray it immediately, which means that if you abandon Salat for other than these two reasons, there is no kafara and it will not be accepted from you even if you pray it qada. Let me repeat. I'm in the car. I'm driving the sheikh to the hotel. It's time for Salat. We don't stop. Isha is approaching. I did not pray Maghrib. We don't stop until we reach the hotel and the Isha Adhan is given. Is there a legitimate reason? No. Can I pray Maghrib Qada? No. And if you pray, it will not be accepted from you. Because you deliberately skipped it. Taib, uh, I was in the car. Park and pray. There is no sur... Sur, sur what? Surau. Surau. There, there is no surau. There is no musalla. There is no masjid. Akhi, Allah made the ground for us a place of prayer and purity. Wherever the salat is due, you have to pray. In the park, on the street, in the class, in the corridor, anywhere. I'm a sister. I cannot pray in the street. Why, mashallah? You're wearing hijab. Oh, people will look at me. So what? You're wearing hijab. They're looking at you when you're walking. You have to pray. You cannot delay the prayer for any reason other than life or death or asleep. Where you're asleep, you're not accountable. Or you forget. It happens in the best of families. You, it so happened you forgot. But to just say, Oh, I'm going to miss Maghrib. Yalla, manage. What are you doing? Wallahi, I'm working on a project. Wallahi, I'm preparing the flyer for the conference. Wallahi, we are doing dhikr. And learning Quran, tafsir. If the adhan of Isha is given, you cannot pray Maghrib. And if you pray it, Allah will not accept it from you. And a, major, and, and a great group of scholars said that you have become a kafir for skipping this salat deliberately. Salat is not a game. This is a pillar of Islam. You must not postpone it until the time runs out. Otherwise, you are out. And this is a serious thing. This is why... Yeah, it is a little bit important to mention this to you so that 
on the day of judgment, I will not laugh at you. And you will not laugh at me because I did my job, alhamdulillah. I gave you. Type. There are conditions for salat, correct? What is the definition of condition? You're a student of knowledge, you should know that. What is meant by condition? Hmm? A what? No, no. Condition in Islamic sciences is something that is required for an action to be accepted that comes before the action. And being there does not require the action to be done or not. But being absent means the action is void. So let me explain this in layman's term, my term. Al-shart huwa ma la yasihhu al-amalu illa bihi. Condition of hajj is that I am a Muslim. This is a precondition. If a Christian comes and says, Wallah, I'm going for hajj with you, inshallah. I'll go to Arafah, Muzdalifah, Minna, the whole nine yards. He does everything like we do. Is it accepted from him? Why? Because the condition was not there. Now, having the condition done and available does not mean that the action will be done. One of the conditions of Hajj is to be a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. Does this mean I'm going for Hajj this year? The next year? The year after? No. The condition available does not mean that the action must be happening or taking place. Now, Salat requires conditions that has to be there in order for your Salat to be accepted. Condition number one. I need to hear you guys. Able? I did not understand. To be a Muslim. Okay. This is the general condition. But we want conditions of Salat itself. Wudu. Before that. Niyya. You have to have the intention. And Niyya is disputed whether it's a condition or pillar, part of the Salat. But the most authentic opinion, it is something that is before Salat. So we have condition. Two, we have Tahara. Tahara has two meanings. Or divided, not two meanings. It, it is divided into two types. One is uplifting the Hadath. Two, purification of the Khabath. What does that mean? Tahara means purity. And purity is one part um, sentimental and other part is physical. So let's begin with the physical part. In order as a condition for my prayer to be accepted and valid, I have to have purity physically in one, my body, two, my clothes, Three, place I'm praying in. This is physical. I have urine. I can see it. Wash it. It's gone. I can pray. My clothes, same thing. The spot. This is what? This is called izalatul khabath. Removing the filth. Removing the impurity. This is half of tahara. The second half is sentimental is something that I cannot see. Who can tell if I'm in wudu or not? Anyone can tell that if I'm in wudu or not? No lights? <laughs> Nothing. You cannot tell. I am in wudu. By the way, if I break my wudu, who can tell? This is something that is not physical. We cannot tell that this and this is known as Al-Hadath. Al-Hadath. And it has two types. Major 
ritual impurity, which, re which results from ejaculation, intercourse, or menses, or postnatal bleeding. This is uplifted with what? Ghusl. You have to take total bath. Or we have the minor ritual impurity. And this is uplifted with what? With wudu. I will not go into details because this is not a class of fiqh. But these are... Your Islam is not accepted without such knowledge. You need to know these things because this is part of the, your ABC. So we have two conditions now of Salat, Niyyah, and Tahara. What else? Google it. You have mobile phones. <laughs> Sheikh, Google. Time. Time, meaning that the time is due. What time is Dhuhr? One o'clock. If I come 12.58 and I would like to pray, my prayer is 12.59. As long as prayer Adhan is giving at one sharp, I cannot pray it seconds earlier. It has to be a beginning and it ends at Asr Adhan. This is the time for Dhuhr. And each Salat has its own specific time. You must pray in it unless exception if you're combining in the case of a traveler or someone in need number four huh direction give me a better word qibla qibla huh facing the qibla so if someone knows the qibla is there and he prays this way his prayer is invalid always no it can be valid but facing the Qibla, for a person praying Faridah, and he's capable of doing it, is a must. If I'm traveling and I'm praying voluntary, Sunnah, I can pray anywhere. So the Qibla is there and I'm headed to somewhere, Jinting. <laughs> huh? I'm heading this way, the Qibla is on my back, I pray Sunnah, Dhuhr, Asr, night prayer, whatever I want. Farida, I have to face the Qibla and come down from my car and park. I went to a friend's house. And it was time for prayer. My friend was not there. So I didn't know where the Qibla was. So I did this. And I prayed. When my friend came, he said, wrong. The Qibla is this way. Should I repeat my prayer or it's okay? I have to repeat because I did not exert all the effort that I can in knowing where it is. And therefore my prayer is invalid. But if someone did his level best, he tried, he called, or a friend told me it's this way. So I prayed because a Muslim told me it's this way. After I finished it, I made a mistake, it's this way. <laughs> Tough luck, my prayer is valid. The sin is on him. I will not repeat. <laughs> Not on you. I do not repeat. Because I did my best. I got the testimony of a Muslim. This is sufficient. طيب. Is there any khalas condition? Or let's go. Finished? Awra. To expose your awra is one of the conditions of salat. True? You're saying awra. Awra is, is to cover. Huh? To cover your awrah is one of the conditions of the salat. And the awrah of male is from the knee till the belly button. And for the women, all of the women is awrah except her face and her hands in salat. So if a sister wants to pray in home wearing her leggings and t-shirt but covering her hair. Good? No. No. She has to wear the full abaya. She has to cover herself, even if home. Sisters call me, Sheikh, I'm alone, and it's dark, and the lights are off. Can I pray like this? <laughs> the Prophet wasallam said, Allah who does not accept the prayer of a woman who reached the age of puberty without a khimar. She has to cover her whole body. This is un 
acceptable. So, moving on. Should we move on? Well, well, uh, with this rate, we're not going to finish. <laughs> Five pages. La, la, la. This is only the first hadith because when I started my research, I spent so much effort and time, and the rest is all one word, two words, and we'll finish, inshallah, today. <laughs> Don't worry, I need, it will be Isha. By the way, Salat is the second pillar of Islam. It is unlike any other form of worship at all. In the sense that it was given to our Prophet والسلام, in the seventh heaven. And all Islam was given on earth. It was given directly by Allah and all the rest through Jibreel, peace be upon him. It is the only deed in Islam that whoever abandons it leaves the fold of Islam. And this is why the Prophet said alayhi salatu was salam, between man and disbelief or shirk, abandoning salat. What separates us from the disbelievers is a salat. Whoever abandons it, he has left the fold of Islam. And therefore it is extremely important to observe it not just to pray it, but as the hadith stated, وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ To establish it. Our problem is that we all pray, but do not have the spirit of prayer. When we pray, we pray with empty hearts. We just do aerobics, but without the contemplation. You try to look at how we pray in front of people in the Surau. Surau. You should teach me how to speak the language. And I should come here for a month and take a course at least. And compare our Salat in the Masjid to our Salat in our room when no one is watching. What's the difference? big difference in the masjid we tend to pray in a different slow nice way but in my room I pray like a Ferrari <laughs> from 0 to 105 seconds what what am I doing because I don't have the spirit of Salat and this means that our Islam is not of conviction it is of imitation We've seen our parents pray, we pray. But we do not perfect our prayer. When was the last time I entered at my parents' room, saw them praying and crying? Never. They only cry when someone dies or something makes them cry. But for, from the fear of Allah, we do not have this. And this is very serious stuff. Number three. To, to pay zakat, that is obligatory charity. Okay, zakat, we will try to, when is the break? 11? You serious? No, no, this is not good at all. Zakat is the third pillar of Islam. It is extremely important. Again, this is not a fiqh. Uh, 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 course, but it is important to know that zakat is a certain percentage given on certain types of wealth to specific categories mentioned in Surah At Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 60, at specific times. The percentages can range from 25 5%, 10%, or even 20%. These are all percentages of zakat. And there are 
different categories. We will not go into that. And uh, we will try to uh, skip it. Question. If a person does not pay zakat deliberately, is he considered to be kafir? Yes. And the evidence? Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, fought with the apostates, al murtadun who refused to give zakat after the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. I wish you did not say this, yeah. Wallah, you're making me tired. Oh. This is a big issue of dispute among scholars. Whether Abu Bakr, when he fought with the apostates for not giving the zakat, he fought them because they were kafir or because they prevented giving by force what they're supposed to give to the Muslim ruler. And this is known as al imtina, refraining from doing something that is mandatory. As for the issue of someone who does not deliberately give zakat, is he a kafir or not? The most authentic opinion is that he's not a kafir. He's committing a major sin, big time. So I stated this 10 minutes earlier, but half of you were asleep, I could tell. I said it's the only deed that leaving it would consider to be kufr in Islam. And that is as salat So one says, okay, but in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says in two places, فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَخَلُّوا سَبِينَهُمْ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ so Allah Azza wa Jal combined them both together. He said, yes, from this ayah, you're correct. Whoever abandons salat or zakat, he's not our brother in deen. As in the ayah, clearly. But we as students of knowledge do not look at one specific evidence and neglect the other. Rather, we have to do our research. And in our research, we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on the day of judgment, no one who hoards, what does hoard mean? Huh? To keep, not only to keep, to hide and pile, anyone who hoards gold or silver and does not give its due, meaning zakat, what will happen? On the Day of Judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal will make plates of this gold and silver and to be burnt with fire and then his forehead, his side, his back would be burnt with these plates until he cools down. Then it will be repeated until the Day of Judgment and then, and this is the punchline, and then Allah Azza wa Jal would either forgive him or throw him in hell. If he was a kafir, there would not be any forgiveness. He would be in hell for eternity. So this is one of the evidences that scholars said makes an exemption for zakat, not paying it deliberately from being an act of kufr. As for Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, the most authentic opinion that he fought them because they did not do their due diligence. They did not give what is due to the Amir. And they have fought against it with force. Ibn Taymiyyah says, the scholars of Islam say, if the Muslim ruler came to a village and this village are Muslims, but they refuse to give the Adhan, they pray. He must fight them, even if he has to kill them until they establish this Sharia ah of Islam. So killing them and fighting them is not because they're kafir, but rather because they are fighting against establishing one of the rules of Islam, though they believe in it. You got the point, inshallah. Tayyip. 
الركن الرابع يس تو بيرفورم حج بيجريمنتس تو مكه طيب يعني بيرفورمز حج This is known for us as Muslims. You don't have to say Mecca because where are you going to go? <laughs> Definitely it is for uh, Mecca. So this is one of the pillars of Islam performing Hajj to Mecca. The evidence in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا Allah Azza wa Jal uh, uh, ordained Hajj upon us, and in the in the Hadith, the Prophet said, "Inna Allah kataba alaykum al Hajj." Allah ordained that you perform Hajj. One of the companions stood up and said, "Every year, and this is very dangerous. Do not ask if there is no need to ask." Now the Prophet said, "Allah ordained Hajj. Halas, leave it. Once is enough. If you say every year, and the Prophet says yes." All of the ummah will be in his neck. So the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam to him, if I said yes, it would have been made mandatory every single year. Leave me as long as I leave you. I don't address this point. Do not come into it. So the Prophet said, al-hajju once in a lifetime. And whoever adds, this is voluntary. And there are conditions for hajj, but we will not mention this due to the approaching time of the break. <laughs> Number five. To observe some fast during the month of Ramadan. Okay, again, this is an explanation from the translator. Khalas, fasting. Everyone knows, but this is sometimes essential for people who are not knowledgeable. This is fasting, okay, Monday, Thursday, uh, three days every month, Arafat, uh, Ashura. So, no, no, no. What we are talking here is, a, is what? pillars of Islam, which is Ramadan alone, 30 days. And fasting in Arabic means linguistically to refrain, to stop. So I'm fasting from talking. This is fasting. But uh, technically, it is to refrain from whatever breaks your fast, from the break of dawn until sunset with, and this is very important condition, with the intention of pleasing Allah. Because you can be on a diet. I'm fat, I'd like to lose weight. So I'm fasting from eating and drinking and all things that break my uh, fasting from break of dawn till sunset. But is it for the sake of Allah? No, I just want to lose weight. Then this is not fasting. It has to have this intention. Taib, I think that yeah, the rest is you all know it, mashallah. Um, why didn't the Prophet والسلام, mention uh, jihad? Isn't jihad something important in Islam? The Prophet والسلام, said that Zurwatu Sanam al Islam al Jihad. A Sanam is the hump on the back of a camel. And the highest of it, the Prophet says, if Islam was the camel, the highest point of this hump is jihad. So why isn't it mentioned here? <laughs> Scholars say it is not mentioned because it is not mandatory upon every individual. It is manda mandated upon those certain people who are either attacked or those who are off doing offensive jihad according to the order of the the ruler, the Muslim ru ruler. Secondly, these will continue until the day of judgment, while jihad will stop and cease when Isa ibn Maryam comes with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. At the end of time, there will be no jihad, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.